The lack of specific news for silver, the lack of catalyst causes it to be a patience game. And I'm talking about forever, not just now, right? And historically, the more patient people have deeper pockets and more commitment as well. They're not just speculating in silver, they make their living in silver. Welcome to the Morning Markets and Metals with Vince Lancey, where each day he brings you the precious metals and financial news to get you ready for your day. And now, here's Vince. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancey, and in today's morning meeting, we're going to be talking about gold, silver, and copper. In that order, all three of these markets have something important to say to us. Okay, you're looking at the uh, four-hour silver chart. I'll go through the markets while you're looking at that. The dollar is up 28 at 104.77. Ten-year yield is 439.8. SP 500 is 52.98, up five, almost five. VIX is 12.35, offered unchanged. Gold is 23.87, up 11 dollars and change. Silver is 29.69, up 12 cents. Gold is leading this morning. Silver led last night. Gold's leading now. Uh, they're both up with the dollar stronger. Correlation means nothing right now. Uh, copper 49 up five cents up well over one percent wti down 21 natural gas up three 79 25 and 242 approximately so the funds are long the funds are getting along natural gas the funds are getting along natural gas and silver interesting and we made some room for the gdx platinum palladium 981 1054 in platinum 981 and palladium to get that right for you. 768 and 271, both of those are down. Platinum is strong on the week. Palladium is sideways on the week. Funds are now getting along platinum and short palladium. Interesting. This is becoming a real market. Soybeans are up nine cents at 12.15. Corn is 4.49, up one cent, and wheat is up again. Uh, almost eight cents at six seventy five. Okay, you're looking at the silver chart. We're going to get to silver shortly. Uh, I'd like to start with something about gold. Okay, so there's the front page of Goldfix. Uh, yesterday, there's no lid on these markets anymore. Uh, was a comment that I made, and speed is a different story. Was a sub comment. We're going to go to the next chapter on that using silver as an example. Uh, the Trump trial is just a disaster. Anyway, um, there's the uh, main stories, and let's get to it. Okay, the In Gold We Trust report is out. Now, you can download it here. We have a link that goes right to their site. You can download it or purchase it, the uh, hard version, online. We also have a PDF of it at bottom for weekend reading. We will cover this all next week. There is a lot to read. This is one of our favorites this is our favorite annual report, frankly. Uh, the diverse topics. There's something for everyone. You know, it's 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 a great it's it's a book, right? It's a great book, and it's it's obviously a, a labor of love uh, for these guys as well. And we will cover it extensively. So that's there. That's gold. In premium, we're going to talk about the copper. There is some important information to convey. Stay with us at the end for that. And right now we're going to talk about silver. Silver wants to go up. What do I mean by that? All right. Remember yesterday I said uh, um, there's no lid on the market anymore? Okay. Well, let's put this up for a second. And let's put the hourly up. Let's remove all the nonsense. See this here? When a market pauses, I'm going to try and convey the psychology of this market and show you how much it's changed. You'll feel what I'm saying if I convey it properly. When a market pauses, it's waiting for information. This is a pause. Always waiting. The longer it trades sideways, the longer it is telling you things are balanced and waiting for news. Now, the news could be actual news, data, uh, a war, event, a new application for silver, or it could be a fresh buyer or seller, not in the market, not in the market, not someone who's already in the market. 
then the market acts on the news. The news is the catalyst that helps the market decide which direction it wants to go in. The news is the metaphor gun to the market said that makes it do what it has to do next. Now, a market that trades outside of the range without news, without news, or without news that doesn't come about like five minutes later, you know, that manipulated news, is telling you someone is losing patience. See, a market that trades in a range and then trades outside of it with no news, that's a market where someone has lost patience, right? That's that's someone who's either folding their hand, right? Because they're already in the market, right? Or, or, they're, or they're recommitting to it. That's why we like to say, at least I like to say, in a bear market, sideways is bearish. In a bull market, sideways is bullish. Now, that sounds very facile, but it's actually very important. The key is, can you identify what's a bear market, what's a bull market? Well, this is a bull market. The lack of specific news for silver, the lack of catalyst, causes it to be a patience game. Now, I'm talking about forever, not just now, right? And historically, the more patient people have deeper pockets and more commitment as well. They're not just speculating in silver. They make their living in silver. This is what they do. You know, I'm referring to the bullion banks, of course. So over the years, people who trade gold, trade bonds, trade other assets will say, oh, silver looks kind of cool. And they'll throw their money in it. And when the market goes sideways, they lose patience. Now, most of the real money speculates silver long. Most of the short-term money speculates silver short, but that wasn't always like that. The short-term money used to speculate silver long as well. Oh, I think gold's going up. I'll buy some silver. And those were people that were not as well-heeled, as deep-pocketed as the banks. And so you have a market that doesn't have a lot of continuous news, right? Right. It's a precious metal. Well, this stat is economic. It's it's a it's it's an economic metal. Well, this is a flight to safety. So silver was like an anti Goldilocks, so to speak. It didn't satisfy anyone's criteria. It was always a punt, right? Not all throughout all time, but they they made it that way over years and years of this. So if you are like me and you're a small speculative long in silver and you're waiting for data and the data doesn't come out or the data doesn't drive the market, you blink. I blink first. We all blink first before the biggest player in the market, before the elephant in the room. But now you have a market that's going sideways and it's not getting hit. Now, what do I mean by that? Get right to the key point of silver. Silver behavior is like this. Sideways is bearish because it doesn't act on news, right? It's not industrial. It's not precious. Sideways is bearish for silver because the bullion banks have more money than you. And sideways is bearish on silver because I punt in silver. I invest in bonds, you know, the, the bigger players. And so we tend to, uh, we globally, the market tends to sell quickly. It doesn't move as efficiently as it needs to. The market has been broken in correlation. And that behavioral conditioning it becomes self-fulfilling. And the banks over decades of this have created an environment where there doesn't have to be news, okay? And they can just say, you know what? We'll just lean on it a little bit. And if it breaks the bottom of this channel, let's say, all the punters say, oh, oh, it's going down. I don't know why, but let me get out. And that's it because they have deeper pockets in you. Now, why am I bringing all this up? Because the world is different now, right? What did I say yesterday? Uh, there's no lid on this market. Well, there is a floor. The banks aren't selling when it goes sideways anymore. The banks aren't interested in selling. They're not comfortable shorting without news themselves. See, some are keeping their powder dry. Some of them say, okay, I want to sell it again, but not yet. Right? Some are hoping someone will do it for them. The tables are completely turned now. See, the buyers of silver have deeper pockets. I wouldn't say they're deeper than the bank, but I would say they're deeper than the bullion desk. Right? I would say they're deeper than the budgeted money that the bank can lose in that area 
And so sideways is bullish. I'll give you a manifestation of that, literally a manifestation of that. This is a Bollinger Band system. Now, Bollinger, I'm going to keep it simple. In the Bollinger Band system, when there are points in the Bollinger Band system that tells me a market will trend, okay? And here's one example. This tells me, this move tells me the market will trend higher, okay? This move, believe it or not, tells me the market will trend lower. And it didn't. And why is that? Because sideways, a bullion bank or someone like a bullion bank sat on it and they found buying here. This is macro discretionary buying, guys. The game is over. This market is supposed to drop when I get this signal, just like it rallied when I got this signal. All right? Just, you know, these signals come and they work. This is a sell signal. This is a buy signal. But when you have one of these near... 11-year highs, and the market doesn't crack on my system, this market wants to go up, okay? And so now, we talk about the actual levels. Right now, silver is sitting under $30. And I know everyone's looking at futures, but I'm going to stay with spot because it'll be an even better answer. It's sitting underneath there, and as time goes on, Orders are building up right above this level. Orders are building up. Now, over the years, those orders building up would be sell orders. Longs getting impatient will put their sell order there. Put their sell order there. Now, buyers are putting buy orders there. Not CTA guys, big guys. And so this market will build up and build up and build up in buy stops above. And you would think sell stops below but there's probably buying underneath there too. So I'm just saying this market is bouncing around at a fake ceiling, uh, waiting for a, a, a news item or a weekend to take it higher. So that's my story. Now I'll give you a couple of levels. If silver, where do I have those levels? There you go. If silver remains above 29.17 today, which is on the week, then $30 in spot should not be a problem next week. Now, I'm not predicting that. I'm just giving you if-thens. Why? Because as we get closer to the end of the month, macro discretionary, which used to be patient, is going to get less patient and start front-running itself. So if this market stays above, to put it simple, in simple terms, if this market stays above, look at, look at how steep that is, right? It's too steep. It's going to break. It's got to break, right? If the market stays above this trend line through the next... day or two, then $30 in spot is not a problem. See this line here? It's imaginary. It's not real. Okay. There's no longer any selling there. There's people wondering if they're selling there. There's no longer any selling there. Now to bring it to a four hour again, if the market breaks 29.17, now I don't mean a print. Okay. I mean, if the market gets below it, closes the week below it, opens up Monday morning below it, you should assume that this market will go down to 2868 and it will be bought there. If it cracks below 2868, then you're going to look at the market go to 2746. Anyway, so this is this is a situation in silver right now. The market is waiting for news and the market will pick a direction on news. If there's 10 people who are waiting to buy it and five people are waiting to sell it and that news is bearish, it won't go down. Right? If that news is bullish, it will go up. And that's what's going on in silver. Tremendous looking market. Uh, it's unbelievable right now. Look, let's be real here. This, this you say, oh, that's silver three years ago. Oh, that's too steep. It won't last. Yeah, that's right. That's what the banks are thinking too. Now they're not thinking that. They're not looking at that going, it won't last. They're looking at it like this. Oh, shit, if it gets above here, I'm in trouble. Okay? That's what's going on. Look at the weekly. All right? Come on. This is like the highest weekly in forever. Right? I'm a macro discretionary guy and I bought gold. Remember when gold did this? Remember, see this here? This is a sovereign wealth fund buy in here. And this is this is the week of February 26th, ending March 1st. And this is the macro discretionary. They drove gold up from 2025, call it. 
to 23.30. So that's a 15% move from the macro discretionary coming in. Now, if silver is bought in the same manner, I'm not saying it is, that makes this move doubled up top. Okay? So that's a, you know, 15% move, right? Am, am I, are we going to $33? No, I'm not saying that. But I am saying there are 10 buyers for every five sellers now. And all they need is an excuse to get in. Okay, stay with me. We're going to talk about copper next in the premium section. Uh, very important for today. But uh, before we do that, let me pull cop copper up here. Uh, I'm just going to say this. Copper is not moving because of a lack of metal. Pro copper is not moving because of a lack of metal in the right spot. Doesn't mean you should be getting short. It just means that the collateral squeeze, the lack of collateral, that the metal's here needs to be there, it's causing problems. Financial players who like to play arbitrage games don't have the money to do that anymore. And so as a result, or the collateral to do that anymore, as a result, they're being forced to liquidate. Anyway, I'm Vince. Uh, have a good day. Thanks for watching this morning's Markets and Metals Update with Vince Lancy. Brought to you each day by Miles Franklin Precious Metals, where this week's special is one ounce gold Australian kangaroos for only $59 over spot. Gold Australian kangaroos are one of the coins coming from one of the six sovereign mints, and with the gold price pulling back recently, you can get your Australian kangaroos at only $59 over spot by emailing Arcadia at milesfranklin.com or calling 833-326-4653. Please note that this video is not intended as legal licensed financial trading advice and is to be used for informational purposes only. Please contact your financial advisor before making any decisions. And thanks for watching.